My grandma wears them, my dog rocks them, and my high school banned them. Ah yes, jeans. Like being pushed out of a vaginal canal, buying a pair of jeans is a universal experience felt by billions around the world. However, many plebeians struggle with finding the perfect pair of jeans. That is where I come in. My name is Lindsay Ann, and I'm your self-proclaimed fashion fairy godmother. In this video, we will go over everything from the best stores, the best fit, and even the best ways to alter jeans. So, without further ado, here is the ultimate guide to jeans. Before we get into the good stuff, y'all need to know your size. Most companies that sell jeans will list a sizing like 25 times 32 or 36 times 40. No, it's not your fifth grade multiplication tables, it's just your waist and inseam. If you already have the perfect pair of jeans that fit you, you can find the measurements by measuring across the top of the pants for the waist and measuring from the crotch to the ankle for the inseam. If you don't have a good fitting pair of jeans, you can always measure your body as well. Knowing your measurements is so important since it's literally how you can find the right fitting pair of jeans. So, like the workers at Victoria's Secret who keeps asking you if you want to get your size measured even though you repeatedly say no. Sizing matters. Now onto the fun part, the fit. I think of each fit of jeans as like a different personality. First, we have the mom jean. I can't think of a better name than Susan. She is the fun, hip, a borderline boomer, and the cool mom. These jeans were super popular in 2016 and they bring back major 90s vibes. These are one of the most comfortable jeans since they are baggy but still fit nicely on the waist. Honestly, these jeans are my go-to when I'm just chilling at home, you know, contemplating my existence. <laughs> I'm so quirky and relatable. Hashtag teenager. Next up, we have Chad, the straight leg gene. He says no homo after every sentence and is considering legally changing his middle name to straight just to be extra clear that he is in fact straight. Thank you, Chad. I think we get it now. Ignoring the raging homophobia, straight leg jeans are my favorite fit of jeans at the moment. They are perfect if you're going to go for that model off-duty look and honestly just look like you have your shit together. Like, look at this. In these jeans, I'm a straight-A student who meditates every single day, knows what she wants to do with her life, and doesn't have insomnia every single night. Ugh, a girl can only dream. Okay, okay. Introducing Groovy Georgia. You guys know my obsession with the word groovy these days. But these flare jeans are my go-tos at the moment. They are so high-waisted, really, you know, pushing those kidneys into the spine. They're also pretty long, so you should wear some high heels or platforms with them. I love flare jeans because not only do they elongate you, but give you like a very retro feel. For all the wannabe five foot tenors, flare jeans are perfect to help you create that elongated look. In these jeans, I'm honestly like 10% torso and 90% leg, and that's the goal every single day. Baggy jeans are perfect for that streetwear look. I honestly don't find them very comfortable though just because the crotch is so low like I feel I just feel weird. But hey you know like to each their own. Whether you're an insta baddie or an abg I'm sure you'll love these baggy jeans. They do make you look a little short though just because you know they like really squish your knee length together if that makes any sense so just you know keep that in mind okay say hi to boo cut jane in my mind boo cut jeans were always like so ugly and i associated them with like levi jeans before levi's were taken over by la girls but i got this pair from a korean brand called black up and i'm actually obsessed boo cut just means that the jeans are tighter on the thighs and a bit more loose on the legs so like the leg opening is wider than the thighs if that makes any sense it's not as intense as flare jeans but this pair specifically has a little bit of flare i think the right pair of boot cut jeans can make your legs look really good and you should always aim for a higher waist as it adds that like extra length I was debating if I should even include these in the video because I literally hate them so much. But you know, my dear students, me as a fellow teacher should try to be as objective as possible. So introducing Agatha, the skinny jeans. If you want to travel back in time to 8th grade shopping at Hollister, you will love skinny jeans. But you know what? Agatha might come back in trend in 10 years. We never know. The sleeping beast may rise again. However, for now at least, humans on the earth can be freed from feeling like sausages on a daily basis, which is, you know, a pretty good thing. The most important thing about jeans is the material. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 2020. It's time to invest in some 100% cotton jeans. 
one hundo. No more spandex or polyester creeping up there with a two or three percent. Jeans that are 100% cotton last 10 times longer than regular jeans and fit your body a lot better. Spandex and polyester should only be in jeans that need to like actually stick to your body, for example, skinny or bootcut jeans. The jeans on the left are all cotton and you see how the fabric doesn't really give. However, the jeans on the right are super stretchy and that's what causes them to rip easily and you just like wasted like $40 again. The rise of jeans is such a crucial aspect and can literally change an entire look. Rise is just the length from the crotch to the waistband, and in my book, there are four different types of rises. Low, medium, high, and ultra high rise. Low rise jeans are perfect for that retro Y2K look. I used to be a hater, but you know what? I came around. Medium jeans to this day just don't sit well with me. Like if you're gonna wear jeans, just go all in. Don't settle for like the middle, you know? And I just don't really think it flatters my body, but you know what? To each their own. High-waisted jeans are my go-to's. They're so comfortable and always able to hide your food babies. When wearing ultra high-rise jeans, I must sacrifice my ability to breathe, but you know what? It's like a worthy sacrifice. They really suck you in and elongate those legs. Hello, now we come face to face. Let's ignore the fact that this interaction is only happening because I forgot to film some b-roll, but you know what? It's fine. So you guys get a real behind the scenes of what my studio is like. I know, so fancy. But let's talk about the washes of jeans. The washes refers to like the color of the jeans and how they were like chemically bleached, blah, blah, blah. It's just like the color of the jeans, okay? And the main washes in my book are light wash, dark wash, acid wash, and... <coughs> and white and black jeans. Light wash is great for those like really basic and chic looks. I definitely like associate it with like model off duty and it really just like pulls any outfit together. But dark wash is definitely more mature and grown up. Before I always associated with like Karens and moms and stuff, but you know what? Dark wash is coming back this season. So I think it's time for me to start learning how to wear it. Acid wash jeans are super trendy. You'll typically see 12 year old girls who are much cooler than you or hype beasts wearing them, but it's just like not really my style and definitely just like I associate it with like more teenage trendy behavior, you feel me? And of course they're your classic white, black, and colored jeans. I honestly think that everyone should have a pair of white and black jeans in their closet. It's just like easy to spice up any outfit and just change things up, you know? Okay, that's the end of this segment. Bye-bye. Okay, let me educate you for a second. The best place to shop for jeans is at the thrift store, hands down. Hear me out for a second, okay? Yes, it's hard and time consuming and sometimes you're just like out of luck, but it's also like the cheapest and most affordable way to find some good quality denim. But if you're not really about that thrifting life, here are some stores you can also shop at. First is Zara. As y'all know, Zara and me had a bit of a falling out, but you know what? Anything can be forgiven. She has, after all, been my ride or die for the last couple of years. For real though, I can usually count on Zara to give me some good quality denim. They have a huge variety and definitely a level up from Hollister and Abercrombie. If you want to get a little fancy though, you probably have heard of Reformation Jeans. Reformation is a sustainable store, but I honestly think their jeans are like a little overhyped. I bought a pair from Depop once and it wasn't all that good, but their jeans are like 100 to like $200. But if you're bougie bougie, you should hit up Redone. Redone jeans are like $250, but apparently they are really, really worth it. I personally haven't tried them, so I can't really attach to like the quality of them. But you know what? Like bougie LA bitches are always so thirsty for them. So like they gotta be good, right? Okay, so the last section of the video, I'm just gonna tell you how I like to resize my jeans. It's inevitable that some of your jeans don't fit perfectly and that's okay. But let's break this down. There are a number of problems that can occur. First, you don't like the color of the jeans. Second, the jeans fit pretty well everywhere except the waist. Third, the jeans just aren't your size, honey. Tackling the first problem, I like to bleach my jeans. For example, this pair of jeans just wasn't really my style, so I decided to bleach them. I put them in some water and let them bathe and bleach. Life goals, am I right? <laughs> I was also too lazy to get a glove, so I just used a plastic bag, but I soon realized that the reason why the plastic bag was just sitting outside was because there were multiple holes in them. Just like my plan for these pants, as you will soon tell. As if things could not get any better, my camera, Albert, decided that he just wanted to give me a heart attack. You can also do like a tie-dye effect, which I shall demonstrate by this very educational TikTok.
On to solving problem number two. There are a plethora of different quirky TikTok hacks to solve this without the sewing machine. You can use a shoelace. You can use a needle and thread and do that like fancy shit. But ultimately, I think the best way to actually resize jeans is with a sewing machine which I will be explaining now to tackle problem number tres. In my second video ever, I very professionally, skillfully, educationally <laughs> demonstrated how I like to resize jeans. I'll link it down below, but basically I flip the pants inside out and sew a line down each side of jeans, then a butt dart. Ta-da, that's it. But the problem with this method is that it is more time consuming and you do need a sewing machine and some decent sewing skills. We have come full circle. That is the end of the ultimate guide to jeans. And as you can see, I am on the verge of death right now. <sighs> Throughout this whole video, I had like a huge, huge cold while editing it. And you know what? Now I can finally rest easy and just take a nap. So that's what I'm going to do. But I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please like, comment, and subscribe. I worked really hard on this video, so let me know what you guys think. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I have for today. So as always, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!